All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who is set to compete at PFL Challenger Series 10, and that goes down on February the 3rd. It's a featherweight fight, and topping the marquee per topology, we have Narendra Gall, Senda Yush, taking on Amanda Levy, and very happy to be welcoming Amanda onto the show. How's your day going so far there, Amanda? It's great. I got a good training session in already, so I'm ready to talk now. <laughs> Yeah, and I imagine you're excited getting back to compete. I was noticing it was the first time back to MMA, at least, like the first time since August 2021. So what's the excitement level with that? I'm very excited. So I'm coming off of an injury that happened in 2022, uh, two of March of 2022. So um, I'm pretty excited to be, you know, getting back in the cage for sure. Yeah, and what was the path, I guess, getting back from that injury like? Were there, I mean, I imagine there were probably like periods of it being a frustrating experience, but like, was it like smooth overall, all things considered, getting back to it, I suppose? Yeah, 100%. Like, definitely challenging for me mentally, especially when I'm a person that's like on the go a lot. Um, and like, having to be like more dependent on people was hard for me, but for overall, it went very smoothly. And I, I'm, I'm very lucky. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like you've always been, like, very highly touted in this space. Like, even 10-some-odd years ago, I remember there being, like, a Vimeo video titled Amanda Levy, The Future of Women's MMA. Like, is that something you've always embraced, like, that level of, I guess, like, spotlight on you? Like, is it something that you think just kind of accompanies you because you've been such a decorated grappler heading into MMA? Like, I guess, how much do you take that in or hear that kind of like outside perception how much does it factor into your mindset if at all um yeah like I always I've always held myself to a high standard especially with like competing a lot in jiu-jitsu so um I don't really pay attention too much to like the outside stuff just because I already put a lot of like um I always I just always put a high standard on myself to begin with so anything on the outside is just like extra so I'm like I don't really try to pay attention to it too much because, again, I'm just I'm always hard on myself to begin with. So I definitely um, don't pay attention to it too much, but I do appreciate it when I do get recognized for that kind of stuff. That was a very cool article, and I remember like being a kid and seeing that, and I was like, "Oh man, like that's so cool!" And like showing everybody, I'm like, "Look it, look it!" So it was <laughs> definitely neat. Um, and yeah, definitely just because of my grappling background, I think um, a lot of girls usually come from more of a striking background for the most part in like the PFL. Like, I mean, Kayla was like a judo girl, but you don't really see many like high level jujitsu girls in the PFL. So I'm pretty excited to, um, you know, get to implement my jujitsu for sure. Yeah. And it's cool too, because I mean, you're no stranger to the PFL banner, like, but it was like a previous, you know, fight at lightweight and it feels like they're opening things up more for, the featherweights to come through and stuff like that. I imagine that part of it probably excited you. Like, do you see 145 as maybe a bit more of a natural weight category as compared to 155 or at the very least more opportunity there? Absolutely. So I took the fight at 155, even though I walk around at like 155, 160. Um, So like, I always wanted to fight at 145. So the fact that they have a 145 now is definitely... Um, very exciting for me. I, I was so pumped when I saw that they were getting that division. And it's kind of a curious dynamic because I'd mentioned your previous like MMA fight had been under that PFL banner when you got the first round rear naked choke win over Miranda Barber. And I'm kind of wondering, like, does this upcoming fight feel familiar in a certain sense? And I guess the reason I ask that is just the structure of the Challenger series being that you're trying to I guess, gain the favor of the panel, for lack of a better way to phrase it, and then get a PFL contract thereafter. So does it feel familiar in a sense, or maybe like a bit of a different kind of feeling here? Um, no, it definitely feels familiar, um, especially because like with TFL, they're just, they're really awesome to work with. Um, they make it very easy. And um, yeah, so it definitely feels familiar. And I'm just really excited to go out there and, you know, implement my game. And I'm kind of curious, like, just if you're maybe one of those people that, like, is constantly studying the broader field. And I guess I'm kind of localizing that to the card here. Like, I know you're very focused on your fight, for sure. But is there even, like, a peripheral awareness of some of these other fights, some of these other women's featherweight competitors here? Uh, for sure. Like, I'm 
for sure. So I, I watched, like, previous Challenger series just to get, like, kind of an idea of, like, some of the other girls um, when they had, like, the 155 um, matchups. And um, I think a lot of the 155ers are actually going down to the 145. So, um, so yeah, so I definitely had, like, a, an idea of who's who. Um, I didn't pay, like, I didn't, like, go into depth yet because I usually just wait till I'm fighting someone to really go in depth. But my my um, coaches and, and corners have definitely um, went a little deeper into everybody else, too. And just with this like specific matchup, like I know you were talking about your you know stylistic proclivities before. I would think that your upcoming opponent kind of fits into that, or at the very least, like they'll maybe have like a similar kind of mindset in their game plan. Just making that inference off of the fact they were a previous Olympian in judo representing Mongolia. Like, have you I guess checked out some of your opponents' previous fights, doing like a bit of familiarizing yourself with what they're bringing to the table or just kind of focusing on your efforts to be adaptable when the fight's going on? Um, yeah, so I definitely check them out. Um, and then, like, for, like, this girl, like, um, I watched, like, some of her judo matches, and um, I saw that she was um, more of, like, a sleeve thrower. So I was like, okay, like, how is that going to translate for MMA? So I kind of, like, look at it for, like, that aspect um, of stuff. Um, but... I don't personally like to watch too much uh, film on my opponents. I kind of let my corners do that and um, then, like, game plan off of that. Yeah, for sure. That's a good methodology. But something I was kind of curious about, because in doing my research on you, I saw there was a change.org petition at one point, like, trying to integrate you into wrestling and stuff like that, like they weren't allowing you to participate in wrestling when you were in high school on the basis of you being, you know, a girl and stuff like that. Like, was the goal to always eventually amalgamate a certain skill set to compete in MMA eventually? Like, we were talking about jujitsu before, and it seemed like you were really wanting to pursue the wrestling there. Was the goal to always create a skill set to compete in MMA eventually? Yeah, for sure. So, um, for, like, the high school wrestling, um, I I also knew that they weren't going to let me wrestle even before I tried to sign up just because I was at a Catholic school. And um, so, like, it was kind of like poking the bear a little bit, too. (laughs) Um, But, uh, like, I wasn't even, like, that mad about it. I mean, like, I was mad about it. But, like, at the end of the day, when they didn't let me wrestle, I'm like, I teach you to every single day. But, like, in realistic terms, it definitely would have benefited me a ton if I wrestled in high school. I feel like the younger you learn any skill, the more adaptable it becomes when you get older. Like, I do wrestling now, and I'll go, like, to different clubs to get wrestling looks and stuff. Uh, but I definitely think that if I wrestled in high school, it definitely would have benefited me a little bit more. Uh, but overall, I still, you know, train super hard, so... Um, and, I, again, like, I, I always knew I wanted to fight MMA, even as a kid. Like, uh, I saw, like, the Cyborg versus Gina Carano match. And um, ever since then, I was like, okay, I'm doing MMA. My dad kind of, like, always kind of led me in that, that direction, too, because he would always watch the UFC. Um, him and my uncle were, like, obsessed with the UFC. So that's why they originally signed us up for, like, jiu-jitsu. And it was, like, me and my brother. And uh, then, like, I did striking on and off. But I always did jujitsu consistently since a kid, um, just because I was, you know, there was like more competition opportunities. So like I would do a competition like once a month or twice a month. Like I was competing all the time. So um, I think that too, just like the competitions um, that I have under my belt, I think that too gives me like a little bit of a leg up because I don't have the MMA experience that a lot of these girls don't have because. When I tried to fight amateur, like, the girls would see my jiu-jitsu record or, like, my jiu-jitsu background and be like, oh, I'm not fighting her. So, um, I definitely think that the competition jiu-jitsu is going to help me because I'm, like, not as experienced in MMA as some of these other girls. But, um, the girl I'm fighting, she she has uh, two MMA fights, so she's not out there. But, like, if I were to get series, I'm talking about, like, Aspen Lad, Julia Bud, like, they have so many professional fights under their belts already. So, um, you know, I think that's the only thing that those girls have on me is experience right now. And any kind of experience that I get in the cage is um, definitely going to be beneficial for me. 
and it seems like a great time to be getting into the PFL. Like, I feel like their stock really rose and has been rising even, like, the last couple seasons. And it seems like what they're doing with, like, you know, the super fight division and even seems like they're generating certain headlines with, like, the Jake Paul signing, regardless of whatever people might think of that particular individual. But just to say, it seems like PFL is really drumming up a fair bit of, you know, attention, at least domestically and stuff like that. So it seems like one of the better times to, you know, put yourself in this kind of situation to potentially, you know, get that contract and all. 100%. I was just actually super pumped when I saw it. I, like, logged on Instagram and saw Jake Paul, like, made the announcement, and I was super pumped. I'm like, this is going to bring so many eyes to the PFL. I'm like, this is just going to be so great for this promotion. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped. I mean, I, people can say whatever they want about him, but I'm like all for it. I'm like, hell yeah, let's, let's get him in there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it definitely like spotlights the promotion and they're doing some great stuff. So you love to see that, but something I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't briefly touch on, like we were talking about how decorated you are and submission grappling and stuff like that. Like, I remember when you got the victory over Gabby Garcia, like, I just thought that was so impressive there, the September 2021 victory that you know stands as like a pretty big upset both in terms of like her cachet I guess going into it not that you weren't experienced but also just like her you know tremendous size advantage like she was like 230 pounds for some of her MMA fights so what were the I guess main takeaways of that particular match and just like the feelings now when I'm talking about the victory over Garcia um, so I, I was, that was just a really good, like, time period for me, because I was coming off the win for my first pro MMA fight, and then hopping into that was, um, like, super fun. Um, I, it's, I, like, looked up, not that I looked up to Gabby, I just kind of, like, knew of her, like, when I was competing as a kid, and then as I started getting, like, uh, more accurate, like, more accomplished in the jiu-jitsu world, I saw girls that I competed against going against her, and they were doing, like, okay and I always was like man I would love to see how I would do against her um so then when I got the opportunity to go against her um it was definitely like nerve-wracking because like she was I I think she was heavier than 230 like we were like if you see her in person it's actually insane I like we we me and my corners were saying she's probably like 270 she was probably 270 when I fought her and uh, we don't we don't know for sure, but that's what, like was our estimate because she didn't weigh in. So like that was like a whole controversy too. Like she wouldn't weigh in, and I'm like, I want you to weigh in because I want everyone to see how much you weigh over all these other girls because all the other girls weigh around like the same weight. Like we're all around like 160. Um, so I'm I'm just annoyed that like grappling doesn't have more weight classes for women because, um, like, there's no reason why we should be going against someone 100 pounds heavier than us. Like, at the end of the day, it's almost, like, dangerous. Like, you, wouldn't, you don't see guys going against other guys that are 100 pounds heavier than them in one division. I mean, unless it's, like, an absolute division. But, like, this was just a, a 145 and up division. Like, there should be at least a middleweight division somewhere in the jiu-jitsu world. So, um, uh, you know, I was just excited to get out there. A little nerve-wracking, but definitely um showed me to, that I can you know accomplish great things and um it had me like super pumped I was on like I was oh man it was just like it felt like I was on top of the world after that win especially being seated eighth and she was seated first to win um just getting like a huge upset win like that was just you know unbelievable um you know I still love it like it's so cool because I'll go out to like a jiu-jitsu tournament and people will come up to me and be like oh my gosh I loved when I saw that match I was screaming at my TV. I was literally crying. I'm like, oh, like it means a lot. So it's it, it's very very cool that that victory, and I'm I'm very proud of it. Oh, and for good reason. I, and it's funny you kind of say that. I also saw you had a post where you were saying like, yeah, we're still looking for that official weight, just you know, for bragging rights almost. Like it'd be good to know just to have the exact number. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because it was funny too. Like um, before I even like like went out there I like thought to myself I'm like I want to know her weight because like a lot of people like were like oh I mean you just want to know her weight so you have an excuse I'm like I want to know her weight if I win if I win I want to know her weight because I want to be like yep that's I beat someone who's that much heavier than me yeah a lot of epic you know happenings there and many more to come it would seem like I mean chief among them this next fight so yeah very excited to be you know readying to you know see this fight Uh, definitely a well-matched kind of opponent and yeah it just looks like a fun card in general but you've been 
great with your time, Amanda. I appreciate you coming on the show, but just, you know, want to be mindful of your schedule as well. So to that point, is there maybe anything you'd like to add kind of as a parting thought as we're wrapping things up here? Um, I'm just really excited to, uh, you know, get out there and get after it. Um, I've been really training hard. Um, I have, I'm surrounded by really great people. So February 3rd should be a great day for me. Absolutely. A lot of very intriguing women's featherweight fights at PFL Challenger Series 10, and people can check that out on February the 3rd. But until then, you have a good rest of your day, Amanda. And again, thanks so much. Thank you for having me.